Okay, in this video I'm going to give you a demonstration of using the PuTTY program from Windows. Um, and also uh, it will be just the same as logging into the CS server from Linux or Mac. So the first thing I want you to do is open up PuTTY. You have to have it installed first. Remember to put the host name cs.indstate.edu it comes up here the login is your username that you've been given and whatever password okay and then you have a prompt here that's waiting for you um, before I uh, show you what we're doing here let me just mention for Linux or Unix um, you should you don't have to use putty because you have a program called SSH that's already installed you open up your terminal and then run the command when you get to your terminal, run the commands ssh your username at cs.indstate.edu. It'll ask you for a password, and then you'll see something um, similar to this. Okay, so then you'll have something like this, whether you're Linux, Mac, or Windows. All right, before um, we look at this, um, basically what this is giving us is a way to view the files on the CS server and that's similar to using my computer and I'll also say that on Windows there's a way to do this the command prompt so if you're used to using the command prompt putty is very similar so if you do cmd like I did there <coughs> you come up with a window that looks kinda similar and it's showing you a directory what this means is we're sitting inside of that directory and you could look at it over here graphically these are the files that you would see in that directory over here you can issue a command called dir that's a windows command for directory listing so you see some of the same files some of these are hidden files and they don't show up in the directory listing over here the ones that are kind of light but you see contacts and then you see desktop if I wanted to go into the desktop over here I just double click over here there's no clicking you have to use a text command and cd for change directory and then I can do dir again to list what's there alright you can do the same type of thing over in putty and by default you may see different things depending on your settings um, but this tilde is actually a shortcut for my home directory there's a command pwd for print working directory that will actually show what the path is so this slash u1 slash h0 slash jkinney that's my home directory and that's kind of like c colon slash users slash jkinney alright the command for listing the directory over here is not dir it's ls you type dir well okay it knows dir as well that may not always be the case um, ls is the normal unix command um, so if you do ls, you see a bunch of files there. If you want a graphical view of those, you can use the FileZilla program. So this FileZilla is like doing my computer or um, Explorer, but viewing things on the CS server. Put the host and username, password, and put port 22 for secure connection. Now on the right hand side here is where I'm seeing uh, the CS server. I click on my home directory there. I see a bunch of files right here. The dot files are hidden files that don't show up by default in my putty. So uh, the first file I hear, see here is archives and then cccc and then CS program. I see cccc and chess um, so it's a slightly different ordering um, the reason is because Windows is where there's two things Windows is displaying all the folders first all the directories and then all the files and putty is just having them intermixed also Windows is not case sensitive uppercase letters and lowercase letters are the same for Windows but over here on the CS server they're not so it does all the uppercase letters first so you notice these are all uppercase and all of those come before this a.out, which is lowercase. 
Okay, so different order of the files, but the same files. And again, I can go into a directory, cd space ccc, um, and if I do lowercase cccc, that won't work because it's case sensitive. This is different than this. I need to use uppercase letters. Yeah, I go into that directory, and it shows that I'm in that directory now. ls for list. These are the files. If you look over here, you get some details about the files. File size, file type, last modified, permissions, owners. Okay, so if I want that, ls-l, space-l. So here I see the file size. This first one is 5.9 megabytes. It was last modified this day and time. And it was created. Um, it's owned by the user Jay Kinney, which is me, which is a user in the group users. And these are the permissions. So the first, uh, the first one says whether it's it, uh, well. You can normally ignore that. Um, the first one says something, whether it's a link or not. The next three are permissions for the user, so I can read and write this file. The last one that's a dash that would be execute. This is not a program. I can't run it. The group can read the file but not write it. Any any user in the group and any anyone on the system could read it if they could get into this directory. But if you look at the listing here, if we go up to CCCC. The permissions here, CCCC is a directory, so that first one says it's a directory, the D for directory. And the user can read, write, and execute the directory. Executing a directory means you can go inside of it, and nobody else can go inside of it. So nobody else will be able to see those files. Okay. There's a special directory here called public underscore HTML and the system is set up so that's where I put my um, website files. If we go to cs.indstate.edu slash tilde tilde jkinney slash that will show whatever is here. Well, so let's go back and do let's look at one of these files. So there's a file called test.txt. Let's see what the permissions are on it though text.txt, it's readable by everyone. Test. And I could look at it here as well. Okay, so that's what is actually there. And if I specify one of these directories, then it'll go to uh, the web pages for each of those courses. For example, CS151 fall 2013. These, this is coming from here. So these are the files. There's index.html which is the, the home page. Right? Um, by the way, a shortcut A shortcut for getting back to your home directory is just doing tilde. So tilde means your home directory. So I'm back home. Uh, I'm going to go in here to my 151 files from the previous semester. If we look at the listing here, some of these are .c files and if I want to look at those files then on Windows you would open up Word or something we can't do that here it's not graphical it's purely text but there's a number of text editors that you can use um, a very simple one is Pico do Pico space and then the name of the file exam1.txt so you do the name of the program you want to run and then space and then the name of the file you're going to open and it opens it up 
So I can use my arrows to look through this file. This is kind of like your notepad. Now if you're in notepad, you would click the X to exit the program. You click file and save. You can't do that here. So down here on the bottom are the commands. So if I want to ch make a change, I've changed it. Control O. This care O means hold down control and then press O. And then I can write it out. I'll write it out to a new name. Okay, now if I want to exit, I mean control X. Now if I list the stuff again, I should see there's exam one dash new. If I want to delete that, there's a command RM for remove. And depending on how your settings are set up, it may just delete it without asking you for confirmation or it may ask you for confirmation. Important thing to remember is there's no recycle bin on this computer, so be careful about deleting things. And be liberal about making backups of your stuff. Um, okay, so some of these files have a star after them, and a star means um, you're telling the system that it's a program that you can run. And if you want to run one of these programs, you do dot slash higher or lower, and that runs it. Uh, this is one of the things that we made in in the, in the class. If I want to kill that, so I could just run it. If I want to kill it, Control C, hold down Control and C, that'll kill any program that's running. Okay, I'll show you a list of the other commands that you have. If you remember my name, you can get to them, or if you remember your class website. Teaching the software and homework. There's a list of, um, so these were the instructions about installing PuTTY and FileZilla. And then there's shell commands. So there's a list here of the most common ones that you'll use in examples. So you can try those all out yourself. Um, one of them to point out is pass P A S S W D. That's to change your password. That's a good thing to do. You'll get some default password, and then uh, you want to change it to something that you'll actually remember. So you can look through those on your own and try them out. To exit. I put, didn't put exit in here. I'll put that in there. This list may grow. So to exit PuTTY, you would do exit. And that closes your login to the CS server. If I was low, of course, you just close that. Uh, I believe exit works also on the command prompt in Windows. Okay. And that's the end. The main thing is you have to do it yourself. So if you didn't already, you want to go open up PuTTY and just play around, use some of these commands, see what files are on the system. I'll just show you that real quick. Okay, so PWD shows you this is where you are. If you do CD space slash, you're, that's like the C colon. You're at the root of the whole computer. If you do ls, you can see those are the um, those are the directories. I'll just tell you one of them. So we were in U1. All the users are in U1. And then there's these drives for um, these folders for different users. So if you do ls space h3. That shows you some users that are there. LS page H0. Those LS space class. Those are all the class users. Okay, if you go back up, um, there was a directory proc, CD space proc. Um, this, each one of these directories has information about every process that's running on the computer, on a CS server. And then these. Um, these files here have information about the computer, so you could do uh, pico uptime. And that tells you how many seconds the computer's been up without 
stopping. You can't save this file because you don't have permissions to it, but you can just look at it and then exit. Or uh, more is a command that will just display the contents of the file uh, right there. So if I do CPU info, it's going to show me information about every core, every CPU um, on this. When you do space, it shows you one screen at a time. There's 32 cores. It's going to tell me about each one. I think it's telling me about each one. And if you're in the middle, you just do Q to quit that. Or Control C. The text editor that I'll show you in class is Emacs. See, are there any text files? Emacs test.c. So that runs the Emacs program with the file test.c. Okay, so again, you can just look around and it gives you some information here about you're on line 5. Um, down in the bottom here, where there's nothing right now, sometimes it will talk to you. So I could say Control X, and that says that I just typed Control X, Control W. And now there's a cursor down there waiting for me to type. What do I want to? Control X, Control W is the command for writing a file. I could say test2.c. So now it's saved as test2.c. Um, there's lots of commands for Emacs. That's also on the same page with the list of commands for um, the shell. So you can look through this list once. So you remember what's possible, and then when you're actually using the program, um, you'll have an idea of what's possible, and you can go back and look it up, and eventually, after using it for a while, you'll just remember these things. To exit it, it's Control x Control c So I'll hold down Control, type X. It shows that I typed that down there, and then hold down Control and type C. That closes it. If I had made changes to the file in the meantime, if I do Control X, Control C, it's asking me do I want to save it down here. And I'll say no. And it says, are you sure? And I'll say yes. Alright, that's enough of an intro for you. Now you need to go and do some stuff yourself. Good luck.